Okay. Welcome back, everybody, to this uh, Sunday afternoon. Unfortunately, we could not have a, a teaching this morning, but we uh, made sure that we could give you this teaching this afternoon. So without waiting too long, I'm going to go right into it. And uh, before we do that, let us just pray. Father of mercy and abundant grace, we pray today that everyone listening to this teaching right now, that their ears are open to hear and to listen, and their eyes can receive what the teaching is about today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Right, so in the last few weeks, we have been talking about the image of Jesus. We spoke about uh, God last, uh, last week. We spoke about his voice that was like thunder and living waters and all kinds of stuff according to the vision that John had in the book of Revelation. But today I want to share something about getting to know God more. Now I know, I know you're a child of God and I know that you know Jesus. But we all say we want to know God more and want to get more into the kingdom of God. But though sometimes we are not prepared to pay the price that is necessary for us to enter into the kingdom of God. All right, so not just knowing him, but also knowing about his kingdom and knowing him. And I want to use this word progressively, knowing God progressively, because that is like just another world, word that just opens up another teaching by itself. So this would include to know that. Like the scripture says, if God tells you to be still and know that I am God, that is an instruction from God that you need to keep quiet sometimes. Sometimes you need to stop talking. Sometimes you need to just become quiet and listen what God is saying. And also, he reminded us to press on despite the things that are happening in the world today. All of us has gone through a very bad experience the last two and a half years with this pandemic that was in the world. Many of us has lost jobs, lost businesses, lost loved ones and gone through very difficult times. But despite all of that, if you know God progressively, you will know that he has kept you going and he's still telling you to press on no matter what you are going through. And also straining forward to that which lies ahead of us. Some of us don't know what God has planned for us. Some of us don't know what the purpose of your life is that God has chosen for you. Some of us are still wondering, why am I here? But if you study the scriptures, you'll get to the answers of these questions. All right? In this day and age, we must learn how to be prepared for anything and everything that can happen to you. All right, so the scripture reading today is from the book of Revelation, but I first want to read it to you in the Message Bible. And there's a reason why I chose this version of the Bible, and you will later understand why. And this is a beautiful, beautiful piece of scripture. So if you are listening to this teaching, please stop the video, pause for a second, go and grab your Bible, take a pen and a notepad, and come and sit and listen to this amazing revelation that by grace of God, I'm going to share with you today. All right, so Revelation, we're going to go to the 22nd chapter in verse 6. And he of the seven angels further said to me, this was John writing on the island of Patmos. He said, these statements are reliable. Well, I love that word reliable because it means you are worthy to receive these things and you may have the confidence and these words are genuine and true from God to you today. This is why you need to give attention. And the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets. Okay, stop right there. So the Lord, the God. So God is, can I put it here? Oh, wrong pen. This one doesn't write today. Let me grab another one. So God, oh, can we see there? Is a God of spirit. All right. And he has, he's a spirit of the prophets. You can see I can't write this way. I need to turn around the other way. So God is a spirit of the prophets. Man, I love that. He has sent his messenger, his angel, to make known 
and exhibit to his servants. Well, that's you and me. Everybody listening to this teaching, we are the servants of God. And this is who he is talking to today, this day, right? Now he says here, he's telling us what must soon come to pass. I want you to listen and hear. How many times in this few scriptures does the word soon come over? Soon this is going to happen. Soon that is going to happen. Soon I'm going to tell you. So listen to the word soon in these few scriptures. And he said here, and behold, I am coming speedily. That means soon, speedily. All right. And so he says, blessed and happy and to be envied is he who observes and watches and view and examines and study and lays to heart and keep the truth of the prophecy. Well, the prophecy is the word of God in the book of Revelations. The, the book of Revelation has to do with predictions, you know, visions, pictures, Holy Ghost language. That's what I call them. Predictions, consolations, and also warnings. So we have predictions. The prophets are giving predictions. Predictions, consolations, consolations. And warnings. This is what the book of Revelation is all about. And this is what God is sharing with us here today. And he says it's contained in this little book. Note there that he talks about this little book. Now you know what? When I go through the book of Revelation, I can see that this is not a little book. Revelation is a very extensive, deep study. And if you don't study the book, you are losing out. All right? So when he says here, I, John, am he who heard and witnessed these things. And when I heard and saw um, them, I fell prostrate before the feet of the messenger, the angel, who showed them to me to worship him. So John fell down thinking that the angel was God himself. But listen what the angel said. The angel said to him, refrain. You must not do that. He says, I am only a fellow servant along with yourself. So the angels are seeing themselves in the same way as what we are. And all it is are fellow servants. The angels are servants of God. We are servants of God. So the angels and us are fellow servants. It's beautiful, man. One amen will do. <laughs> right. And then he says here, with your brethren, the prophets, with those who are mindful of and practice the truths contained in this message in the book. And then he says, worship God. Whatever you do, worship God. While you're reading the book, he just stops for a second and he said, worship God. Because the truth is being told by the Spirit of God, who is the Spirit of the prophets. And he gives us predictions, consolations and warnings. And he says then, worship God. Because of that, you need to worship God and say thank you. All right, so he further told me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book and make no secret of them. Well, many people don't study this book and many people don't preach this book because they don't understand it and they don't know it and they don't know how to interpret it. But by God's grace, that's why we are doing it. For the time when things are brought to a crisis and the period of the fulfillment is near. Now, again, the word near here also means soon. It's coming soon. All right. So we must give attention to these things. All right. And then he says, yeah, he who is unrighteous, unjust and wicked, let him be unrighteous still. He who is filthy, vile and impure, let him be filthy still. And he who is righteous, just and upright in right standing with God, let him do right still. And he who is holy, let him be holy still. I might just stop there right now and ask you, of these four things, where do you see yourself? Are you holy before God? Are you righteous before God? Are you filthy before God? Or are you unrighteous before God? Right, those are the four that he talks about here. And then he says, behold, I am coming soon. Again, God talks about coming soon. When I read these words, I'm thinking like, you know, there's no time in the kingdom of God. That's why I never wear a watch. 
Because for me, in the kingdom of God, there's no time. Yes, we all have a phone, and we all have time on our phone, and we watch the time so that we can be there or there or where we need to go at the right time. But on my arm, I don't want to be distracted with time when I'm busy worshiping or when I'm studying the word of God. Sometimes I study and study and study, and I don't have anything on my arm to remind me what the time is. And then when I like suddenly stop, I'm like, I wonder, it felt like I had done maybe one hour of studying the word of God, and then I see four and a half hours has passed. Mm. And to me, that is just what I need in the kingdom of God. Mm. I need to know that I can spend numerous hours in the word of God to be able to give you these teachings that he puts on my heart. Now, there's a very big revelation coming, so please keep watching because you're going to be so blessed. Now, listen, he says here, I shall bring my wages and rewards with me to repay. Oh, I love this word, to repay. You know, the word repay here, let's just put it here on the board. The word repay is to pay back. Okay, what have you lost? Come on, somebody. What have you lost in the kingdom of God? He's coming to pay back. He's coming to reimburse. Reimburse for you what you have lost. He's also coming to return or refund, right? Refund. He's also coming to pay off. Man, this is beautiful. Coming to pay off and coming to settle. So what is it that you have today that you're asking God to come and repay for you? What is going on in your life today that you say, come, come Holy Spirit, come pay back, come reimburse me. Come refund for me what I've lost. Come pay off what I owe. Come settle for me this payment that is dragging me down. This is a beautiful promise from God in his word. Right now he says here, he says, and what is owed, and render. He come to render. Now render is another word. He's not having to come and repay. He's coming to render for you. Now what is render? Render means, oh, there's so many beautiful words there. It's provide. He's coming to provide. Who of you need provision from God today? All of you. You all need provision. You all need to know and understand the scripture, what God is saying to you. He's coming to render and repay all those things. He's coming to provide for you. He's coming to give for you what you need. He's going to make available what it is that you need. What do you need today? Come on, listen to this. He's going to hand over to you what you need. And he's going to bestow upon you. Bestow upon you. Come on, somebody. Don't you need this from Christ? This is a beautiful promise from the word of God. And then he says here, And each one just what his own actions and his own works merit. So I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. I want to write that on the board because God says now, I want to go here. So God says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. So I am the first, I hope everybody can see here, and I am the last. I want to show you in a minute what these two words mean. When God says, I am the first and I am the last, he also says, I am the beginning, let's just put here, beginning, all right? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. All right, so in the beginning it was there, and he's also the last, which also talks about the end. Now the revelation has to do with these two words that I'm going to share with you today, so please keep watching, and also while you're busy, like the teaching, because it helps me also to know. Thank you very much. All right, so, now listen. He says here, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Now, listen to what he says. The before all, hello, he is the before, I'm going to put this in big letters, before all, this is what he's saying, and he also says, and the end of all. So he's also the end of all. Can I just say to you something today? People, when they read this in the Word of God, he's the first and the last. When they start to listen to this word here, they all think 
that God is talking about the time that Jesus will return as a son of God. He's coming with the clouds and every eye will see him and you know the whole teaching. But I want to give to you today another revelation and another way in which you need to listen to the scripture and read it and understand it. What this end here, the last and the end and the end of all is really talking about. Because people think that it has to do with the so-called end times. And I want to give you something new today to go and think about what I believe it really means as the Holy Spirit has given it to me. So I'm going to read this to you again. And please pause and listen very carefully. And I want to do it right now for you again in another version of the Bible. All right, now listen. This is the amplified version. He says, the angel said to me, these are dependable and accurate words. Oh, sorry, this is the message. The first one was the Amplified. It says, these are the dependable and accurate words. Everyone, the God and master of the spirits of the prophets. So I want to give it to you like this today. I don't know if you're going to see this on the board. All right, here you are as a person. I'm just going to do this quickly. Forgive me if I just do it like this. And let's just put a smile and some hair. All right. Here's a prophet of God. Can I do it like that? Those prophets of God that are listening now. So the word says God is the spirit of the prophets. Now a prophet of God has got many spirits. I want to give it to you like this today so that you can understand. You have a spirit. Can I put it on the board? Of joy. Joy. You have a spirit of peace. You have a spirit of love. All the spirits that God consists of. That is what a prophet of God has inside of him. Because it's no longer you that live, but Christ that lives within you. Amen. So, you have a spirit of love. You have a spirit of revelation of God's word. You have a spirit of the word of knowledge. And I can put it like this. You have a spirit of prophecy. All right, you can understand the word of God, and I'm talking about the book of Revelation, which has to do with the end times, the last, the end, and the end of all. This all I'm talking about here has to do with this. So this is what we're doing here. I'm just going to see if I can find a pen that's writing better. Let's just see this here. All right, that's better. All right, we can carry on. All right, so he says here. These are dependable and accurate words. The God and master of the spirits of the prophets sent his angel to show his servants what must take place and soon. There we have that word again. And tell them, yes, I am on my way. Blessed be the one who keeps the words of this prophecy of this book. All right. So if you're a prophet of God, you have the word of God inside of you. You have the prophecy of God, which is the word of God, and you have that inside of you, in your mouth, in your ears, in your heart. You keep this prophecy inside of you, and you share this prophecy, which is God will repay, he will pay back, he will reimburse you, he will refund you, he will pay off your debt, and he will settle everything that you are battling with come on somebody Amen. come on Amen. and then he says i will render to you i will provide for you whatever you need whether it's a spirit of joy peace love revelation kindness meekness self-control discipline the fruit of the spirit can i put it here the fruit of the spirit everything that god has the prophet of god has that inside of his hot right so this is why this is such an amazing scripture because he says here god is the master of the spirits of the prophets so the prophets have these spirits and god is the master of these spirits so if you're a prophet of god and you are a true prophet of god you have revelation knowledge you have word of knowledge you can prophesy you have joy you have peace you have patience, kindness, you have meekness, you have love, you have discipline, mm. you have self-control. Come on, somebody. 
You have mm. all these things that God complains of because he's the master of the spirits that now live within you. Come on, this is an amazing piece of scripture. And then he says, yeah, I, John, saw all these things with my own eyes and I heard them with my ears. So John saw God. He saw a vision of God. He saw and he heard with his ears and he saw with his eyes. And what did he see? He saw this is going to happen and this is going to happen when Jesus returns. How amazing is that? This is why Brother John here is teaching us and showing us exactly what the angel showed him will come. And then he says, yeah, I heard them with my ears. And immediately when I heard and saw, I fell on my face to worship at the feet of the angel. And he objected. The angel said, stop. He said, no, 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 no. We are fellow servants. Listen, many people have told me, I've seen an angel. If I ask the question, have you seen an angel? Many will say, I've seen an angel. The question is, have you really? Have you really? Because angels are fellow servants of God. God sends them out to go and do something. What he's going to come and do is to give you the prophet. He's coming to give you predictions. He's coming to console you. And he's coming to give you warnings through the angels of God, like he did to John on the island of Patmos. In the same way today, God sends out his angels who are servants to God, just as you are a servant. And God sends to the prophets predictions, consolations, and warnings about the last time, the end of all. And many people, like I say, think this is the end when Jesus returns, but it's not. Let me tell you what it is. Right, let's just finish this first. He says, don't seal up the words of the prophecy of this book. Don't put it away on the shelf. Time is just about out. I love that. Message Bible. Let evildoers do their worst and the dirty minded go out in pollution. But let the righteous maintain a straight course and the holy continue in holiness. And again, I ask you, are you holy? Are you righteous? Are you dirty minded? Or are you an evildoer? Only you and God knows where you are. And because of that, you will know, are you a prophet of God? And is God the master of the spirits that are in the prophets? Like these spirits I've explained to you here on the board. These are the prophets of God. A word the spirit of joy, peace, love, revelation, word of knowledge, and prophecy. And this is the Bible. He will open up the Bible for you, and he will give this to the prophets, and you will have it in your heart. Can I do this? In your heart. This is a lovely heart. This is what you will have if you are a prophet of God. And he says, yeah. And you know, I'm sad to say today that everybody wants to be a prophet. Out there, there are like new Pastors coming up, new churches are opening up, and everyone is a prophet or a bishop or a self-ordained or what, 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 what. I don't understand that because if God is completely and uh, really, really accurately called you to be a prophet of God, you the people will know you by your fruit. You will have the word of God in you. You will mm. understand the mm. scriptures. You'll be able to explain Amen. them like I am right now on the board. You'll be able to open the scriptures up and give it to the people to understand what God was saying to John to say to you today. Because this word is also for you today. It's not something that happened 95 after Christ. It's still today the same word for you and everybody listening mm. right now. Mm. And this is God's word for you. And he says here, yes, I'm on my way. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am on my way. Thank you, Jesus, that you are coming. Come soon. Come quickly. Mm. Come speedily. Because this world is in a mess. Come on, somebody. I'm not a doom prophet. I'm telling it as it is. What do you see around you? Oh, I look at the beautiful things. I see the birds. I hear them chirping in the morning, worshiping God. I see the flowers, the trees, the streams, the mountains. I see all the beautiful people and the people that God has created, making them beautiful. But through their own destruction spirit, they have allowed themselves to go down and become filthy and become evildoers. And I see that in the world today. You can just go on the internet and type in, 
uh, singers or actors or whatever. And you can come, there's many, many of them that uh, worship Satan and worship all kinds of little demons and devils and doing things that they should not be doing. This is why I'm saying I'm not a doom prophet, but the reality of the word is this. There's things happening out there. All right. And so he says, I'll be there soon. I'm bringing my payroll with me. Yes, what we have said. He says, I come to repay. I come to render. I come to pay back to you what you need. Oh my God, I will reimburse. What has the devil stolen from you lately? What has the devil taken from you that he was not supposed to take? God says, I'm going to repay you. I'm going to bring it back. I will refund you. Have you paid a lot of money to help somebody and then they walked out on you and you lost it and they stole it from you? He says, I will repay you. And God does not give 30, 60. He gives a hundredfold. Come on, somebody. This mm. is the God that we know. He pays a hundredfold. He will pay off your debt. Come on now. Be honest. Everybody listening to this teaching, you have debt. There's not one person that doesn't have debt out in the world because you can't make debt unless you have debt. That is a worldly system. That's not God's way of doing it. All right. And he come to settle anything that is in your life that should not be there. All right. And so he come to render, provide for you, Yahweh, Chira, the Lord, your provider. Come on out. He wants to give to you. He wants to make available to you skills and abilities and plans and new things that you want to know he will make it available for you he will come and hand it over to you because authority if you walk in that and you have boldness god says you're a co-heir with jesus christ and when you are a co-heir with jesus you have received an inheritance the same as what jesus has received you are now a son of god Come on, somebody. And so he will do that for you and he will bestow upon you what it is that you need and what he will give you. Right now he says here, I'm the A to the Z, the first and the last. Listen, the final. So the word here, last, means I have the final say. This is what God says. Whatever somebody says to you, this is what God says you're going to have. He's got the final say. And then he says, I'm the beginning and the end. And the end here means I am the conclusion. Okay, conclusion means it's finished. It's over. It's paid for. Tetelestai, the Greek word meaning I've paid the price. That's what it means, so conclusion. So when he talks here in this scripture, and this is the revelation, do not miss this revelation. When people read these scriptures, they go, I'm the first, the beginning, and I'm the last, the end and the end of all. That's not what it means there. It means that God is the last. God is the final. God is the conclusion. God is the end. God is the end of all. Not what is going to happen in the world. God himself is the final. He is the conclusion of everything that will happen. Because Jesus will come. He will take his bride, you and me. And we're going to live with Jesus forever. And with God, we will be put before God as a bride. And God will have the final say. He will have, he's, he's the one that will have the final say. And the conclusion will be God himself. Not what's going to happen in the world. Yes, the Bible teaches us. In this book of Revelation, that heavens and earth will pass away, but the word of God will remain forever. And the word of God is Jesus. He has the final say. Jesus is the conclusion. Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He is the completion at the end. Right. So if you're going to study this book, you first must understand what this book is all about. And I've said it many times before. It's a great blessing. It's such a great blessing to read this word. In verse 3 it says, just read it aloud. Read it aloud. Read it aloud. Whether you understand it or not, read it aloud. Because you'll be blessed. That's the promise from God. So I want to give you these two. The angel said to me, 22 verse 6. These are dependable words. These are accurate words. Do you know that the word dependable, I want to give this to you, means reliable. This is a reliable word. 
This is a trustworthy word. This word from God is a loyal word and trustworthy. This word is faithful. It's also a steady word from God. It is a responsible word and also a trusty word. And the second word in that scripture there in Revelation 22 verse 6 says, it is an accurate word. The word accurate talks about precise, precise something. Something that's correct or something that's exactly the way that it should be. This is how this word is. It is true. It is truthful. And it is a perfect word from God. All right. And he says, yeah, let's do the prophecy. He's bringing you the predictions, the consolation and the warnings. This is what the book is all about. This is what he's talking to us about. God is the master of the spirits of the prophets. And the prophets are here to give predictions, consolations, and warnings. And because of that, we have all these spirits here living inside of us, in our hearts. No longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. And so God looks at you and looks at your heart. And what does he see? He sees this. He sees Jesus. He sees the word. And this word, listen very quickly, is the last. This word is the end. And this word is the end of all. Because mountains and valleys and, and rivers and clouds will pass away. But the word of our God will remain till the end. And so this is what it's all about. And Jesus is the revelation of the Spirit of God that gives to the people as they need. And I know this is a lot to take in, but this is an amazing teaching. If you really go and take the scriptures and read them over and over and study them, you'll be so blessed with it. And so the Lord is the God of the spirits of the prophets. And he sent his messenger to make known and exhibit to your servants. And this is you and me today. It's not just John on the island of Patmos. This message today is true and faithful and it's for you every single one of you sitting here listening every one of you standing every one of you lying in your bed every one of you watching at your desk right now everyone listening to this teaching this word is true for you are you a prophet of god are you holy are you righteous or are you evil and are you an evil doer and are you filthy that's the question that only you can answer for you today right but i want you to understand verse 11 and verse 6 goes together if you read them together you'll understand the revelation of the god of the spirits blessed is he who observes and lays to heart and keeps the truth man this is the truth of jesus what an amazing teaching this is it's such an amazing word I'm going to just quickly, quickly give you something to think about. The angel saw, uh, says he is a fellow servant with John, with the brethren, and also with those who are mindful about the truth. So remember, this is an instruction from God. It's an instruction, not just to study the word, not just to read it, but there's an instruction that says this, go out into the world and tell people about this book. Don't put it on the shelf. Don't keep it secret. Don't keep it for yourself. Go and tell people to study this word, read this word, take this word, make it your own, become a prophet of God and receive all these gifts that God has said that you may have. This is what it's all about. It's a reassurance from God that he's coming soon and that he is, that he says that he is. He's the first. Let's go there just before I close. He's the origin the original seed, that's who he was, the first word, that's who God is. He is the foremost, the earliest form, and the primary God. He is the master of the spirits of the prophets. So the prophets have spirits, but God is the master of those spirits. That's why prophets need to walk a straight line. You need to know what you're doing. You need to know where you're going. You need to know what is trustworthy. You need to know this word is true. Yea and amen. And it's very important for you to remember that. He's the beginning, the start, or the launch, or the commencement. He's also the creation and the foundation 
of everything that consists in this whole big wide universe. That's who God is. And also uh, is the conclusion. He's the end. What's going to happen in the world is not the end. God is the end. He says, I am the first and the last. I am beginning and I am the end. God is the end. What's going to happen in the world is not the end. God is the end. He has the final say so. And he is the one who's going to terminate everything. He's the finale. He's the ending. And he's the closing stage of the scripture. So now that we understand who the God of the spirits is that live within you. How about getting up every morning and say, Spirit of love, master of the spirits that live within me. God is the master, the master of the spirit of love, the master of kindness, the master of the spirit of meekness, the master of the spirit of whatever you need for that day. Call upon that spirit of God that lives within you and say, be my master today. Be my master of joy. Be my master of peace. Be my master of kindness. Be my master of joy in the Holy Ghost. And ask God and trust him that he is the master of the spirits that live within you, the prophets of God. Come on, somebody. That's God's word for you today. I want to pray right now before we close. Father God, we glorify you. Father of mercy and abundant grace, right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I call the spirits, I call God the Father, the creator of the universe, with the spirits of all the fruit of the Spirit of God, by the Holy Ghost, to come and live within us, in everyone listening to this teaching tonight, that the spirit of joy, love, peace, Patience, kindness, meekness, discipline, self-control, friendliness, everything that we need, strength and power from God. Let those spirits come within us and live and let we go out into the world and be those spirits with God living inside of us. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen.